The shooter buck currently is like $106, where the transformer is $289. Is it worth it? This is Morel's transformer buck. It comes in three pieces and it also comes with rebar to stake it into the ground. The base is not included, that could be bought separately. The reason it's the transformer buck is because the head goes bye-bye and then this front piece pulls off and now you can take this wherever as a target because as a matter of fact, the foam on this is the exact same as the high roller. If you're unfamiliar with the high roller foam, I've got videos reviewing the high roller. I purchased the shooter buck and Morel sent me the high roller, so I did not purchase this one. This video is not sponsored and there's zero instruction for Morel. They just gifted me the target. There are two sizes of the high roller. This is the big one. The small one here is the same width of this 3D target. On this side, we have the heart and the lungs. It shows the vitals. On the other side, it's more like uh, 3D rings here. The base does have this kind of tongue and groove, but it is flat and very solid when you set it down. And you'll notice this tongue and groove allows you to use the handle to pick up the entire deer. On the shooter, the antlers are removable and they're these hard plastic. Here, these are not removable and it's a type of foam. Now, this deer is a very short target, as you can see, about 29 inches off the ground and the top of the antlers are about four foot. This one here is a little bit taller, maybe a little bit more realistic, you could say, as far as how high off the ground it is. But on the transformer, the head is actually a realistic head. This one actually has ears if you care about that sort of thing. And if you're a hunter, this rack is probably more realistic for you too. Maybe not you, but me. On the shooter, we have this little removable foam piece in the center. It is a pretty small area compared to the transformer. You can see how big this entire area is. It is, that's why it's the transformer. It is like a second completely different target. On both targets, this other foam is a harder foam. It's a different type of foam. It's not meant to be shot repeatedly over and over. Just a misfire can hit it. On the transformer, it's a 10 by 16 plus shooting area. Where on the other target, it's basically just the vital. I must note these red eyes. I think they're red because it's titled the transformer. At least I haven't seen a deer like that. You may or may not like it. I think it kind of looks a little weird. The transformer buck can take any type of arrow. When you look at the box, it should make you feel comfortable to shoot any bow, any arrow. Where this other one, you definitely don't want to use broadheads on it. We do have a stationary head here on Mr. Shooter. On the transformer, we can rotate 360 degrees like an owl. The box says any bow, any tip, any speed. And my experience with the high roller foam, that's gonna be completely true. The box also says it's easy arrow removal. On the other high roller targets, the arrow removal compared to all the targets on the market was not easy. And they said they were working on that, working on tweaking the formula a little bit last time I talked to them. Now we're gonna test how difficult it is to pull the arrow from the target. The small high roller and this replaceable core cost about the same amount. The prices could vary, but they're both around $100 to $130 generally, which makes sense because they're almost the exact same target, except this one is connected to a deer. And all of this darkness and wear on this high roller is because I ran over it with my truck. Um, that's not normal wear. I was just kind of being a YouTuber. Is the marketing hype real? A target with the strongest foam, even strong enough for trucks to run over it? As I review products, I like to pick them as part as much as possible, but I'm not picking them apart in the sense of good or bad. I'm just trying to state the facts and then let you guys determine if it's a good or bad factor. Like the targets being really short, I say that, I don't mean that as a bad thing or as a good thing. It could be either or depending on how you perceive it or how you're going to use it. For example, a shorter, heavier target means it's gonna be more stable and not move around more but you could say it's less realistic because it's shorter and heavier. Do you prefer it to be more realistic or do you prefer it to be more stable? I don't know. The shooter buck comes in at nine pounds where the transformer comes in at 25 pounds. Next, we're gonna test arrow penetration with a traditional bow and a compound bow.
With the traditional bow, we got three and a quarter. With the compound bow, four and three quarters. <laughs> three and a quarter? <laughs> no way. Yeah, barely. No way. That's, I think that's more dense than the high roller. To get a little bit of the user experience, we've shot 50 shots into the target with a mix of the compound and traditional bow. And there are two things that I don't like too much. The first one is just how hard it is to pull the arrows out of this foam. And to make it a little easier, you can use an arrow puller to pull arrows out of, or even lubricate the arrows. Um, you can get some of that gear at Shatterproof Archery. That's my company. The second thing I don't like about this target is the height. I'm 6'3 with really long arms, and it's not natural to bend over and pull this arrow out. To make it easy to pull the arrow from the target, I need to get on like one knee here and start pulling like this. When you get to the right height and grab an arrow puller, it's not too bad. If you're using rebar and mounting this outside, you can leave it up a little higher, which is nice. Another thing is you can mount it. I already mount all my targets up on a stand. I'm blessed to have this workshop, but I don't have somewhere outdoors I can shoot, like a field. So if you have a field near your house you can shoot, take that as a blessing because you have unlimited distance. That's pretty cool. I have a stand here and I'll be able to mount the deer up on the stand or build something for it. So for me that it's super low isn't a major thing. Most deer targets are gonna be really low. 3D targets are gonna be low. But when I use the transformer, I'm definitely gonna mount that up because the angle at which I have to pull arrows out is very uncomfortable. I don't expect 3D targets to be this high off the ground unless it's a moose or an elk or a standing bear. But you can see I have it two entire feet off the ground and now it's actually natural to pull arrows out. So if you have a home range and can just build some sort of platform, it does make it nice in my opinion. And after testing the high roller and this one, the foam really is the same. On the inside here, you can even see the red foam coming through. It's just that they painted it with this brown shell. This is uh, 54 shots on this target uh, and this is 500 shots. And so you can see we try to aim in one specific area to wear out the target, but it holds up really, really good with 500 shots. If you're spreading your shots out and coming from both sides, it's gonna last a long time. So let's do a quick estimation of cost per arrow. This target held up to 431 shots before we had a complete pass through. So if you divide the 431 by the cost of the target, we're talking 23 cents per shot. Now you can replace that insert for like $35 and then get another 431 shots. Oh, and by the way, that's from one single location. So you'll double or triple that amount of shots if you're not shooting from within 10 yards. And basically if you're not a sniper, you'll do better. I was trying to wear it out as quick as possible. Whereas with the high roller foam on any of these targets, I would have to estimate because I haven't been able to shoot enough arrows through the target to pass all the way through. My estimation is probably 1500 shots in a three inch circle will get you to pass all the way through. So let's do the math on that. And we're talking 19 cents a shot, if that's the case. Where again, you could get well more than 1500 shots if you're switching sides and changing your aiming location, and if you're not perfect. So cost per arrow, the more expensive target is actually cheaper. This might help understand what's going on here. Take a Honda Civic, for example. Take the car body. Now you could put two different engines in there and have two completely different results of what the car can do and how fast it can go. That's how these targets are. Looking pretty similar, but the foam, the foam is what makes these two targets the most different. That's where the price point can be hard to swallow, but cost per arrow, it's actually cheaper on more expensive targets at least in the 15 I tested. Now the downside to extra durability is generally that the difficulty of removing arrows goes way up, but that's only in the initial stages of shooting. After you shoot the same area for a while, 100 to 250 shots, it starts to loosen up that area and the arrow removal becomes easier the more the target gets worn down. The words that come to mind when I think of the shooter buck is cheap, easy arrow removal, small target area, medium durability. And for the transformer, I just think of dense, hard arrow removal will last forever. If you're gonna shoot broadheads into it, definitely this target. <laughs> and really, really short. I have a playlist with like 15 target reviews and a recap of all the targets if you want to check that out. My favorite targets are the ones that stop arrows and both of these do that. Thanks for watching, stay shatterproof and I'll see you on the next video.